Hey everyone, I'm TH Pine and welcome back to my Screeps Newbie Guide. Today we're gonna automate the process of spawning new creeps. Let's jump right into the code, shall we? So this is the code from last time. Um, we check for the roles of our creeps and call the corresponding modules. And now we're gonna add the code for spawning new creeps. It's actually super simple. It's uh, the same as you would do in the console. Uh, we go with game.spawns.spawn1 to access our spawn and um, use the function create creep to create a new creep. Uh, Bad Wolf in the comments suggested that we should use, uh, instead of work carry move move, we should use uh, work work carry move because work is more important uh, in this specific scenario because the, the, the ways between like the, dif the distance or the path between the spawn and the energy source is really short. So uh, it's more like work is more important than moving because the, the path is so short. So we're gonna do that, it's a pretty good suggestion. Um, so we do work, work, carry, move. It's, it's also more um, like we, we use, we create a bigger creep like this because this actually costs 300 energy. So um, if you think the, like the work part is a little better, so we make a better use of our energy basically. It's a little bit more efficient as well. So that's pretty good. Um, we're not gonna put any name in here. And uh, we're gonna start the memory with a work, with a roll, first roll, uh, harvester. And let's actually put this in the next line, so it's a little easier to read. And um, state, not state, working, false. There we go. And we put a semicolon here, and that's it. That will automate the spawning of your creeps. Not very clever so far, obviously. This will only spawn new harvesters, but it's gonna work. So let's, let's execute it. Oops, that's not executing. Executing is <laughs> saving the script, so control S. And the spawn should hopefully create a new creep now. It doesn't, um, so, ah, oh, there we go, it does. And uh, there we go. Okay, let's let's add a little bit more functionality to this. Um, first, we're gonna check for the name. So we say var name is this, and if name is un not undefined, then we're gonna print the name. Console.lock spawned new creep and the name so um yeah create creep can either return the name of the creep or an error code if it didn't work because you don't have enough energy available or something like that so this will basically for the most uh, in most ticks this will fail because we don't have enough energy but as soon as we have enough energy it will succeed and return the name of the creep However, as mentioned, this will only create harvester creeps, which is which is not great. Obviously, we want harvesters and upgraders because with the upgraders, our, up our controller will downgrade, and well, that's not the thing we want to happen. So, what we're gonna do? Well, we want to have, or the idea is here. What I want to have is um, a, a set amount of harvesters and everything else being upgraders. So we upgrade our control, like basically. Uh, the harvesters will make sure our colony doesn't die out and the upgraders will put all the uh, available resources into upgrading the controller because upgrading your controller is pretty important. It, um, um, it allows you to, uh, it gives you access to more advanced buildings and it will also increase your global control level which is important for um, your CPU limit and the amount of rooms you can control. So upgrading your controller is very important so yeah we're gonna go with that. So let's uh, set up a variable and call it um, var minimum number of harvesters. And we set it to six. Well, let's, let's go with 10, why not? Okay, um, and then we create a new variable and we call it number, oops, number of harvesters. And now we're gonna use a so-called low dash function. Um, it's called low dash because you can access it via a low dash and then you put a dot there and then you can use the function called sum and the function sum takes um, two arguments well first it takes one argument and the second one is optional but we're going to use two arguments the first one is the array of creeps we have so uh, or the object of creeps we have it's not an array um, so game creeps so this will um, sum up all the elements of the creeps object so all the properties so we're gonna get the number of creeps we obviously don't want that we only want the harvesters so we're gonna use the second argument which is a filter function and the easiest way to put a function in here is use a so-called arrow function now move, I will write it, write it down and then um, well at least the, the basis of it and then I'll gonna explain it so you type in uh, this and then you go like um, c dot memory the role is harvester there we go 
and this will do the trick. So what, what does this mean? Well, this is a very easy way of defining an anonymous function. Um, first off, we have the parameters of the function uh, in, in brackets, and then we have an arrow, and then we have what the function should return. Um, if it's a, yeah, in, in this case, um, it's a simple statement, which just, well, checks the role for being harvester. And uh, this, fun this function will filter this object over here and will only return the number of cre creeps with the um, role harvester. So we can actually print this. Let's do it. Console to, to check if we did everything right. Console lock and uh, number of harvesters. We save and um, we check to the console and uh, oh, wait. Uh, oh, I'm an idiot. Um, it says two, which is correct because we spawned Alexander. The other, um, the other thing is wrong, though. It returns the error code. I didn't want it to print that, so we don't have to check for. This is actually wrong. We don't have. We, we can't check for undefined because in the case of an error, it will not return undefined. The the creating creep function that is, it will return an error code. So we, what we're actually gonna want to check is if uh, we did not get an error code. So an error code would be a number below zero. So name lower zero. And we want to invert that by um, putting an exclamation mark in front of it. So there we go. This will return every t This will tr return true when we don't get an error code. So if we get a name. Uh, wait, th point, you say. Couldn't we not, ju could we not just take name for be uh, name being greater than zero? No, because um, well, let me let me write down the, the line. If we would instead use um, if name greater zero, this would always return false. Always in any case. If we get an error code, which is a negative number, it will always obviously return zero uh, false because a negative number is higher uh, not higher than zero, so that would be return uh, false. And in the other case, when the function succeeds, it will actually return the name of the creep, as mentioned. And if you compare a string in JavaScript with a number, you always get false. So in any case, this would return false. So this is not working. So what we have to do instead is this weird double negation, which is a little weird. Um, not, not double negation, but yeah, instead of turning <laughs> the comparer around, we have to use it and use the lower than comparer and uh, negate it, which is a little weird. But that, that's how it works. Maybe there is a better way. If someone knows a better way d or, uh, for doing this, um, feel free to share it. There's probably a way to check if name is a string. That would be a little nicer. Um, yeah, that would probably be a better way. It, as I said, if someone knows a good way of checking this, feel free to comment below. Uh, let's return uh, to our sum function over here. So that seemed to work. It says three, uh, three harvesters now, which seems to be correct. Alexander, whoever that one is, and... Uh, no, Violet, and the one we're spawning right now, not Anthony. Anthony is the upgrader. And, um, okay, now we're going to use that variable and uh, check for it. We're going to do if number of harvesters is lower than minimum ha number of harvesters, then try to uh, create a harvester creep. So we do something like this. Um, we're going to put the name variable over here um, yeah name is undefined and we remove the var keyword from here and now we're only gonna spawn a new harvester if we don't have enough harvesters that makes sense right and um, also oh by the way if, if this is not if, if this block is not reached and n name will be undefined down here. And if you compare undefined to zero, it will actually return true probably because it will not print out the console log if I think correctly. That's interesting. I didn't thought about that before. If you compare undefined with a number, apparently you get, you get true, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna double check that. <laughs> or maybe someone know, who knows better um, writes down in the comment as well. Um, but yeah, that seems to be the case. Anyway, so what if we don't want to spawn a harvester? Well, if we can, we will spawn uh, an upgrader. So we're just going to do else if, uh, not if actually, just else. And um, try to do the same just with an harvester, uh, with an upgrader. So we s use the same command and just switch the role to upgrader. There we go. And now the spawn will try to, or will spawn um, 10 harvesters and uh, everything above that will be upgraders. And when the first harvester dies um, because of old age, um, as mentioned earlier, they have a limited time to live of 1,500 ticks, which is around an hour or so, depending on the speed of the server. 
um, uh, well, then it will start spawning new harvesters because the number of harvesters dropped below zero. So that's good. So we got this in here. Very cool. Um, maybe you notice already, uh, depending if you had creeps dying or not. Let's actually demonstrate that. Let's do that. Okay, we, we, we check the memory really quick. And um, we take a look at the creeps object. And we have four creeps in here. Violet, Anthony, Alexander and Parker. Okay, let's kill Violet for demonstration purposes. Demonstration purposes. Uh, we just click on, on, on Violet and we say suicide. We could also do it via console. There's a suicide command which you can use, but we, we will do it manually over the clicking interface over here. So we click, we kill Violet. So Violet will die. There we go, she vanished. And now we're gonna refresh this memory object and it will still say four creeps. That is because we didn't clear up the memory. So if you create a lot of creeps and let the script running for a while, and your creeps die out, the memory memory will um, contain all the old creeps as well because um, the memory is not really bound to your object. It's just like a, a way to store information. So what we actually have to do is to clear up uh, the memory um, whenever um, there are a creep whenever a creep dies, basically. So what we're gonna do is so we go at the, right at the start of the script and well, actually, we don't have to. We can keep the memory getting flooded, but yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Um, there's a maximum limit, which is two megabyte, I think, uh, which should be enough for quite some time, but still, it's not nice to have the memory um, spammed with uh, use useless information. So let what we're gonna do is um, clear memory at the beginning of the script, and we do that by um, iterating over the creep, uh, the creep um, object in memory. So we do let name in memory dot creeps and then we're gonna check if the creep is still alive so we do if um, game dot creeps name is undefined then we're gonna delete uh, this property because the creep is apparently dead so we can um, remove the memory entry so we go delete which is a JavaScript function to delete a property in an object. And if we do memory, uh, delete memory, memory creeps name. There we go. And that's it. And that should clear the memory if I didn't do it wrong. So let's refresh um, the memory and Violet is gone. We have four creeps again because we spawn, we're spawning a new one and uh, but Violet is gone from memory. So that worked as well. And that's actually it for today. Um, yeah, this is basically, this is the absolute minimum. If you have this setup running, your colony will not die out on its own for now, as, as long as you're not getting attacked and other things. But this should be okay for now. So you can, if you, basically if you start out, you should write down something similar to this, what we have now, before you go offline for the first time, so your colony doesn't die out. So um, yeah, that's the code. Um, I will, as always, put the code in the description below. Um, share it on GitHub so you can uh, access it there. We'll put some more comments in there as well so it's a little bit easier to understand and read. And um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, as mentioned, if someone knows a good way of comparing um, the return value of the create creep function with um, um, on, on if it is a name, um, please share in the, com in the comments below. And also if someone has insight on what happens if you compare undefined with a number, um, yeah, feel free, to sh feel free to share in the, comment in the comments below as well. So long, thanks all for watching. I always highly rec uh, appreciate if someone spends his free time to watch my content. So thumbs up for you. I'm TH Point. Thanks a lot for watching. I said that already, right? Um, I'm TH Point. Have fun and see you next time.